Aloha. Good morning. We're going to do something a little different today. It's such a beautiful morning out there. We're going for a ride. So I came into the gallery to drop off a few things and then we're going to hop on the Tenere right up to the canyon. Once I get back, we'll lay down on the track. Um, we'll talk about all kinds of different things. Um, and I'll also put time codes in the bottom so you can jump to uh, topics or locations that uh, you're most interested in. We'll talk about photography, cameras, the islands, the Tenere, and we'll just have a good old ride out there. All right, back in black, Team Jazz today, baby. Off we go. So we're starting here in Hanapepe town. And Hanapepe is on the southwest side of Kauai. It is known as the art town, traditionally anyway. Uh, back in the day, it was the red light district. There was an air force base nearby at Salt Ponds. And a lot of the sugarcane camp would come down and uh, party and yeah. <laughs> various uh, viceful activities but now it's uh, the art town it's been the art town for probably the last 20 years I guess after Hurricane Iniki came through in 92 um, so we're leaving Hanapepe coming back onto the main road so if you want to visit Hanapepe you need to get off the main road that's one of the great things about the town and um, consider it one of those hidden gems I think you know you have to kind of look for it uh, but once you get there, it's pretty special. There's a lot of uh, artists, uh, galleries, and most of the galleries are artist owners, small businesses, uh, food, restaurants, uh, the best bread on island with Midnight Bear. Kule's Gourmet is here, wonderful sushi, Japanese grandma, local grinds with Bobby. Um, then we have a uh, new coffee shop going in right next to me and a boutique hotel down the way and of course talk story books uh, so probably the only bookstore on island right now i guess so um heading up to waimea canyon man what a beautiful day today those little clouds just dotting the sky we're coming up on the left turn for salt pond so if you want to catch a sunset uh, salt ponds is a good spot to do it also there's camping there um, very enjoyable spot, lifeguard beach. So uh, it's protected in the summertime. The swell can be large there, but it's it's a really nice location to enjoy and relax. And hell, you might even get some karaoke. And we're through Hanapepe now, heading out to Waimea town. Hey, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It'll really help me out. Appreciate it. Mahalo. We'll put some images uh, that I've taken in some of these locations that we drive through. I'll place those uh, on screen. And then if you have any questions on any of these locations, for photography or for recreation or for a drive, uh, let me know in the comments. Coming up here on the left in Kamakani, we have Aloha Sweet Delights, absolutely delicious malasadas. So if you're on island uh, and you want some malasadas, stop by there. They open up early too, so you could um, catch them before a surf session anywhere on the west side, or if you want to go up uh, early for a hike, stop in there on your way, uh, catch, uh, get some malasadas and some donuts and other sweets uh, quite tasty there now we're finally getting to see the ocean and over there on the left is our first glimpse of Nihao uh, the Forbidden Island uh, is what it's called kind of the nickname it's owned by the Robinson family and indigenous Hawaiians only uh, are allowed to live there Coming up here, we have uh, pakalas. So anytime you are driving in the islands, near the ocean, and you see a lot of cars parked on the side, that's gonna be a surf spot. So if you're a surfer, check it out. Uh, pakalas used to be pretty local, um, as far as, well, localized, I guess I should say. Um, now, I think everyone knows it's there. It's on all the apps. Um, it's uh, left 
uh, really beautiful wave. I've never surfed it. I've gone and photographed some of the palm trees around there before, but uh, never surfed it. Yeah, good spot, Southwest Swell. Um, check it out. It's on, it's on all the surf apps. Coming into Waimea Town, crossing the Waimea River right here. Um, what do we got going on in Waimea Town? Yeah, it's uh, west side, so it's hot, dry, uh, not nearly as uh, crowded or populated as some of the more tourist areas of the island like Poipu or certainly Kapa'a. Um, passing through Waimea Town, there's the Captain Cook statue. We got Big Save, a very expensive gas station here on the left, the Shell. And coming up to Waimea Canyon High School on the right. And the library coming up here on the left. So keep that in mind. So Waimea does have a wonderful pier. It's called Waimea Pier at uh, Waimea Landing State Park. And it's a left turn right here across from the high school after the library. And that's where I took the photograph Fall Dance. One of uh, my favorite sunsets that I've ever taken. So as we pass through Waimea Town, look here on the right, you have Island Taco, a very nice taco shop. And in front of us is the rare example of a pickup truck that is not a Toyota Tacoma. I tell you what, this island loves Tacomas. I have Toyota uh, FJ Cruiser, uh, but it's in Alaska right now. So, all right, we're making the right turn on Waimea Canyon Drive. We are going up Waimea Canyon Drive to Waimea Canyon. Um, two ways to get up here, you could take Koke Road, uh, which is just uh, in Kekaha. And we're going to come down Koke Road, but we're going up Waimea Canyon Drive because I want to show you uh, some of the twisties and a good area for Pueo. And the Pueo is the Hawaiian short-eared owl. They are my favorite bird, perhaps? Maybe Lilac Breasted Roller is uh, a close second, but I absolutely love the Pueo. And up here uh, on the top of this little hill is where I've had the best luck photographing the Pueo. And uh, again, I'll put a couple of photographs of the Pueo that I've taken over the years up here. Um, this is a wonderful road to bicycle on as well. Actually, Koke Road's maybe a little better. It's not quite as steep, but if you want a good challenge, uh, come up Waimea Canyon Drive pretty steep in sections. Uh, I used to live up here and commuted uh, by bicycle, so I would take this ride every day. Um, kick my ass on the way home every single day, but uh, the beer tasted good afterwards. So anyway, we're about to crest the first hill up here on Waimea Canyon Drive, and uh, this is where you want to begin looking for the Pueo. Right there, that's uh, speed limit sign, 25 miles per hour. From here, all the way up to about mile marker seven. Keep your eyes open for them. And of course, when you're coming down the canyon at night, uh, keep your eyes open for them as well. Um, obviously, we can't photograph them at night, really. Um, but we can watch out for them and, and make sure that we don't uh, hit them while they're on the road because I have seen them literally just in the middle of the road, just uh, standing, hopping around on the middle of the road. Um, this section right here is where I took uh, the Pueo photograph. Those yellow eyes get me all the time. Again, great, great spot for Pueo. Um, I've also photographed the elusive deer on this road, uh, maybe two or three miles up from here. Uh, but Kauai does have a few deer, mule deer, uh, not the axis deer of Maui or Lanai, but we have the mule deer. And I photographed them up here uh, in one of these little uh, fields that we're going to see up here on the left. Um, now, as we crest Waimea Canyon Drive here, we get this little flat section that's probably mile five or so. This section is a wonderful sunset spot. All right, you have Nihau and the ocean over on the left and the sun's obviously going to set over there wonderful wonderful sunset spots so if you're coming down the canyon and you're looking for a sunset or you don't know where to pull off for a sunset look for this flat section of road and good sunset opportunities there when you uh, are thinking of renting a motorcycle on Kauai 
look at Kauai Motorsports. They are in Puhi. They are who you need to see to rent a motorcycle. And I encourage you to do it. It's a lot of fun riding out here, especially when we get good weather like today. Just absolutely glorious. You notice the road's not in the best condition. Uh, a lot of potholes, so that's something to keep in mind. And when you do come up to the canyon, in all honesty, the earlier you get up here, the better it is. Uh, a lot of visitors um, are going to come up in the canyon and, you know, they're sightseeing, so they're going to be uh, taking it uh, pretty slow. So if you get a late start, anything after 10, you're just going to be cruising up the hill, basically. Um, if you want to ride a little more aggressively, but of course safely, then get an earlier start, uh, I would recommend. So still uh, coming up. Uh, Waimea Canyon Drive and we get our first glimpses of the canyon here on the right um, and we have all these little roadside pullouts you know if you want check them all out they can be really good especially in uh, the rain or when the rain is lifting and in the evening time as well uh, because the sun's going to be behind us shining onto the canyon and you might catch some rainbows and you might catch some clouds lifting and here's one of those roadside pullouts that that I recommend um, to stop and look at and stretch your legs a bit. As we continue to climb up Waimea Canyon Drive, heading to Waimea Canyon on a beautiful sunny day with a few puffy clouds. I think this might be a good time to tell you about uh, the Tenere and how I came to own one. Tenere is my first motorcycle. Never ridden a bike before. I did a safety course in Tennessee and uh, ordered the bike. And I actually ordered a KTM 390 adventure bike. Uh, because it was my first motorcycle, I wanted, I thought I'd maybe I wanted one that was a little smaller. And so that's what I ordered originally, the KTM 390. Uh, ordered it from Quiet Motorsports and the thing just never came in. It just never came in. It kept getting postponed and postponed. And I moved to a different part of the island, so I couldn't commute by bicycle anymore. So I thought, hey, I, you know, I got to have a bike. So I called uh, Quiet Motorsports up, and I'm like, hey, I, I need a bike. Do you have anything that's, that's similar or something that's coming? And they said, yeah, we got a Yamaha Tenere 700. I'd never heard of it. So I said, well, let me do a little research on it. And I looked online and five minutes later, I called them back and said, let's move the deposit. So that's how I came to get uh, my 2022 Yamaha Tenere 700. And I absolutely love this motorcycle. I should have gotten a bike 20 years ago. Um, so if you're thinking about getting a motorcycle and you know, you've thought about it for a while and you haven't ever gotten one, uh, but are curious, I highly, highly recommend you getting a motorcycle. They are a lot of fun. Um, my Tenere 700, yeah, it's a little big, um, but, you know, I've gotten used to it. Uh, I have 10,500 miles on it. Uh, when I got it, it had zero, so I've uh, ridden it pretty, pretty good in the last uh, year and a half. I've taken off-road several times. Uh, every time I do, I seem to lay it down. Um, <laughs> so I put the crash cards on, a friend and, friend and I uh, put the crash cards on, and I have, uh, those are OEM uh, crash cards that I have on the bike, and I have a ASV uh, clutch lever because once, uh, when I laid it down, I bent the clutch backwards so I couldn't reach it anymore. And uh, I have Krieger bags on the back, um, and then a Krieger 40 liter bag that goes on top of the uh, OS base. So the Krieger bags are they're fantastic. I love them. Uh, very convenient. Very easy to take on and off. Uh, keep everything dry. They're the dry bags. And the Tenere, yeah, it's it's absolutely fantastic. Um, haven't had any issues with it at all. Um, as far as tires, it came with the Pirelli um, Scorpion STR tires, and I put about 6,000 miles on those, 6,000, 6,500 miles on those, and then I went with a little more aggressive um, tread with the Anaki Wild. And I tell you, I only got about 2,000 miles off the rear, uh, and then it had some irregular tread wear, and 
it was wearing out and I just thought wow man that's such an expensive tire as far as you know the tire and then the tire change itself so I went back with the Pirelli Scorpion STR uh, rear and then I kept the Anarchy Wild on the front so here we are in uh, one of the best twisty sections here uh, the trip up to the canyon and I got a guy who's driving about 15 miles an hour in front of me this uh, was not as much fun as I hoped it would have been but you know that's on me for getting a little later start anyway the Tenere 700 um, yeah it, man you know because it's my first bike I really don't have anything to compare it to but uh, I absolutely love it it's um, I think it's a pretty forgiving bike as well um, both off-road and uh, on and one reason I thought it'd be good to have the ride-along today is last week just by chance uh, Dave Moss a tuning and suspension specialist guru came into the gallery and we were talking motorcycles and he said hey is that your Tenere out there and I said yeah it is and he goes I'll I'll tune it for you I'll put uh, I'll tune the fork and the suspension for you and uh, get it suitable uh, to your riding and riding style and experience and weight and yeah five minutes later we're taking the toolkit from underneath the seat and he's on the suspension and tuned it up right for me man and man it is fantastic it's like a new bike so if you're in the area of uh, Dave Moss, I believe he's out in uh, Sacramento, Santa Rosa, perhaps. Um, see him, man. He, he's incredible. Or if there's a tuning specialist, suspension specialist near you, uh, man, absolutely. Go and have him look at your bike, tell him how you ride, how you want to ride, and get it done, man, because it, it's, it's so much better um, after Dave looked at it. So. Mahalo, Dave. I appreciate what you've done to the Tenere, and yeah, the cornering's fantastic. It's uh, much, much stiffer than the stock setup. So, thank you very much uh, for that. I'm using the DJI Osmo for the video of this. DJI Osmo Action 4 uh, action camera is what I'm using and I've clamped it onto the Tenere with the Ulanzi R094 super clamp which is pretty cool I got the super clamp um, so I could put the Osmo on a safari vehicle when I go on safaris in Africa but um, I thought, hey man, since I got it, I'll try it out and put it on the Tenere and see how it goes. So I've placed it on uh, the little accessory bar that's just behind the windscreen. And I think it's doing pretty good. The DJI Osmo uh, recording mode that I'm using now is the loop mode. And I've set it to max. I actually tried a similar video with loop at 20 minutes and it seemed to record over itself after 20 minutes, which was not what I was looking for. So once I set it to loop and max recording, it began to record continuous with one minute clips. Uh, once you import it into your computer, it's got one minute clips. Uh, when you view it on the camera itself, it's a continuous 30 minute or 40 minute whatever um, clip. And that's what you want. At least that's what I want for this type of uh, video. Loop on um, max recording. And the rock steady mode is what I've used for the stabilization, which I think has done wonderful. Uh, I, I, I think it's pretty cool. So I'm really happy with the setup, both with the Ulanzi R094 super clamp and of course the DJI Osmo Action 4. Now that Ulanzi Super Clamp, you can clamp it onto all kinds of different things. Um, I've clamped it onto the handlebars, I've clamped it onto the crash guards as well. The crash guards gave a pretty cool view and um, yeah, you can get creative with it. So I think it's going to be really useful not only for Safari but also for some motor vlogging and even out in the field. I mean, you could clamp it onto uh, a twig or a rock or 
um, tree branch, all kinds of different things. So, so yeah, um, recommend it so far. Again, this is really the first time I've used it. Um, but for now, yeah, no complaints. Coming up on mile marker nine and the Kikui Trail. So once you get up uh, into uh, the canyons or the mountains, what we call Malka, then if you see cars parked on the side of the road, you know that's a trailhead. So Makai, cars on the side of the road, surf spot. Malka, cars on the side of the road, trail. And this is the Kukui Trail. Um, it's a nice little hike. It's not my favorite hike by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a good hike. It goes down to uh, the Waimea River. So if you want to get down to the bottom of Waimea Canyon, that's the trail. There's also a couple of side canyons that you can hike into, and those are fantastic. Longer hikes, and they are a little tough to come out of the canyon because it's straight up and exposed and hot. Just so hot, so keep that in mind if you go up. You're gonna definitely wanna take uh, lots of water or fill up at Waimea River and put in your iodine tablets or your magic straw or whatever. Uh, because long hike and uh, the heat is intense over here, especially on that trail. So uh, after Kikui Trail, we have just a couple of miles more and then we get to the Waimea Canyon main viewpoint. There's many viewpoints, well, there's two uh, parking area viewpoints for Waimea Canyon and then you have roadside pull-offs um, up, up the canyon drive. Um, I personally think the best view of the canyon is from this main viewpoint that we're gonna stop at. If you want to look across the canyon, this is it. If you want to look at uh, Waipo'o Falls on the northwest side of the canyon, this is a good spot as well. Although there is a better roadside pullout for the uh, waterfall, Waipo'o Falls. If that's what you want to see, then definitely pull off uh, past the main viewpoints. And there's a roadside pullout on the right, and you'll see it. And that's where you want to stop for uh, direct views of Waipo'o Falls. But for main views of the canyon, man, this canyon viewpoint uh, is, is pretty good. Now, a word on when's the best time to photograph Waimea Canyon from any of these viewpoints. I personally feel that the best time to photograph Waimea Canyon is in the late afternoon, early evening. And the reason I say that is because the sun will be behind you shining onto the canyon. And that way you get a little more light um, on the canyon itself and that red dirt's going to have a little warmer hue to it, much less contrast. Keep in mind that sunset at the canyon is much earlier than sunset uh, on the coast because you do have the poly ridges behind you that are going to block the sun as it gets low. So, you know, anytime uh, 3 o'clock to 6 p.m. I think is a good time to photograph. Um, maybe 3 to 5 in the winter time. Also look for any uh, clearing clouds because that'll be spectacular. That's kind of my holy grail shot. I haven't gotten it yet, but I want to come up after a rainstorm and those clouds are low in the canyon and then they're going to break apart and lift off. And that's what I'm looking for. There's a couple of good shots I've seen of that, but unfortunately <laughs> I haven't gotten mine yet. So I'll keep working on it. Now, uh, one thing to mention with the canyon, uh, we do have paid parking now. I believe it's $5 to park and then $10 entrance fee to Waimea Canyon State Park. And we really appreciate um, your efforts to put money into the county coffers to protect these public lands because it's such an enjoyable place. Everyone wants to enjoy it. And um, the contributions that you guys make uh, when you visit the state parks and when you park up here. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. So big mahalos to you for um, for helping us out there. It's, it's really important to us, so uh, thank you. Here we have views of uh, Waimea Canyon. Pretty nice. Uh, so if you want to come up in the morning, you see the, the contrast is there. And the contrast does get a little worse as the day goes on. But shooting into the northwest side there, Waipo'o Falls, not too bad. But once you start getting more central and then uh, southeast views, it, it is heavy contrast. 
so again morning yeah you might get some good light early in the morning um but the morning's tough to photograph up here i think unless if there's some weather um, or a lot of cloud cover so again look for waimea canyon i believe uh, best time to photograph waimea canyon is going to be in the afternoon to early evening and then you can catch a couple of shots here and then uh head up to coke or something so if you want to see more moto vlogging of Kauai, let me know and um we'll try to do that so here i'm leaving uh, waimea canyon parking area of course you can see and we're going to head down from waimea canyon gonna go down coke road so we're going to go down a different way than the road we came up we're going down coke road into kekaha so let's get going uh, with that and we'll look at some of the twisties and we'll have a good ride down the canyon coming out of waimea canyon viewpoint we took a left heading back down the canyon if you go right you head up to the beautiful coke state park we'll probably do another vlog uh, for coke state park at another time let me know if you'd like to see that um, yeah, so we're heading down the canyon and now I'll take a moment to talk about uh, the climb gear I'm riding in. This is the climb Marrakesh jacket and pants. Um, the helmet is the Shoei Hornet X2 or the Shohei Hornet X2. The uh, climb gear, so uh, the climb Marrakesh jacket um, yeah, it's so comfortable. I, I think you've probably read that in reviews, but it is absolutely comfortable. It has armor in the back, shoulders, and elbows. Is it, yeah, it's a summer riding jacket. Uh, here on Kauai, it can get a little warm uh, in the afternoons. Um, I probably should not have gotten black as far as color. It would have been better to get gray, and I think that would have made a little more suitable for the climate here uh, but you do have little vents uh, those pockets that i have there on uh, the left and the right you can open that up and get some vents and then on the sleeves there is a little vent there the zipper that you see there um, on the sleeves there by the wrist um, really really quite nice extremely comfortable um, it is water resistant but not waterproof so there's no Gore-Tex in here so in uh, the winter if you're riding on Kauai it's likely you're going to want a, to bring a Gore-Tex jacket so I also have the Klein Carlsbad uh, riding pants and jacket and that's my Gore-Tex and I wear that probably 70% of the time um, just because you never know uh, if it's going to rain later in the afternoon or um, if you're crossing over if you're only riding up um, on the west side then yeah the climb Marrakesh is probably all that you need but when you go up to the canyon yeah, you're going to find some some wet days up there uh, and especially higher up in Coquet State Park you're going to uh, get some get some wet days so uh, when you come over to ride yeah bring bring that summer jacket and if you have some Gore-Tex bring some Gore-Tex as well I think you'll enjoy that um, the fit of the climb it's a little big uh, but I decided to keep it uh, a little big uh, because if I were to take it to the mainland and go for a ride on the mainland or one day fingers crossed uh, a BDR somewhere an easy BDR then I'll take uh, this riding gear or the Carlsbad which is also uh, cut a little large uh, but that'll give me the opportunity to put some uh, puffies underneath or, or put some sweaters or something to, to stay warm because over here um, yeah I get cold pretty easily actually <laughs> so um, yeah so that's that's what we have there the climb gear um, it's expensive but I think it's uh, it's it's good value uh, I believe um, high quality and yeah very very comfortable riding gear happy to have it so coming down uh, Waimea Canyon Drive still, we just passed the Kikui Trail. Um, to come down Koke Road, um, you're going to want to take a right. Uh, 
the road, well, it's not really a right turn, but just the road veers to the right. And the Coquet Road is the main road from generations past. So it was the only way up to the canyon. Um, and then later they put in Waimea Canyon Drive. But this is uh, Coquet Road that we're on now. And this is a wonderful, wonderful twisty section of road that is an absolute blast to ride. Um, one thing to consider is you never have the roads to yourself. On this road, it's true that there are fewer cars, but often the buses come up this road, uh, the tour buses. Um, and some of the narrow twisties, they are, yeah, taken up uh, as much road as they need. And then also, uh, because there are fewer cars on this road, sometimes the cars uh, and the trucks that do come along this way are not paying attention uh, as much as they should. Uh, on this particular day on the way down, I, um, yeah, saw a car, a truck that was coming towards me and they were in my lane, which wasn't very comfortable. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to turn the camera around and we're going to show the road view and we're going to take the twisties of Koke Road down to Kekaha without commentary. We're just going to put some music on and we will ride the twisties down Waimea Canyon on Koke Road to the ocean at Kekaha. Enjoy this stretch of absolutely fantastic Malka to Makai Road on the T7 Yamaha.
Kaha. Turn left to go to Waimea, back to Hanapepe, turn right to go to Kekaha Beach and Polehale State Park. Wonderful places to catch the sunset and to walk on the beach. Now, let's have a word or a talk about cameras. What cameras do I use? I use a Canon R5 and a Canon R3. Why do I use Canon? Because I've always used Canon. So my first uh, camera was a Canon Rebel. Uh, I told you in uh, one of the videos, uh, I believe uh, the Surreal Planet, or not the Surreal Planet, the um, Surreal in Nature Photography uh, episode, I uh, showed you my first Canon. And then I got a Sony and I hated it. And I went back to my film Canon. And then I got a digital Rebel. And from then on, it's always been Canon. I think the progression was a digital Rebel and then a 7D and then 5D Mark III, 5D SR, and then now the R5, R3. I also had the 1DX Mark II. So anyway, I've always used Canon and I know where the buttons are. I know the wheel. I know what my index finger can touch and where it goes and, and when it rolls the, the dial up top, what that does to the aperture and exposure and etc. etc. And I know how to access all the focus points and I'm pretty set with the menu system. So that's why I use camera. What camera should you use? Whatever you want. They are all very, very good right now. Uh, any camera out there now is better than any camera that was made five years ago. Uh, as far as functionality, uh, likely focusing, autofocus, autofocus speed, uh, dynamic range, all of this stuff. The cameras now are so good. So um, get what you're comfortable with, get what your budget can afford. And um, you know, if you haven't made an investment in lenses, then maybe that's what you're gonna stick with. Cameras that you're interested in, you can always rent. You can always rent before you commit. Um, so that's that's an idea. What cameras am I interested in? I'm really interested in a Leica. I'd like to try that uh, Leica M11. Uh, the Hasselblad also, um, I'm interested in that. Interested in the little higher megapixels. And of course, the Canon R1 is what I'm interested in. I really want to see what that camera has. If that has 45 megapixels or more, I will get it on the day it is announced because I really want more megapixels in my wildlife photography. But I love the R3. It's a perfect camera. And hey, let's be honest, 24 megapixels is still a lot. All right, we've made it back to Hanapepe. And take a right to my gallery. And I am going to get off the bike and open up for the day. Hey, thanks for the ride along. And I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Aloha.